Hello guys, it's Gmax from Gmax Studios and today we are going to be looking at how to retouch this image. We already looked at how I process my images on camera raw and then how we would um, do our blemish removal non-destructively. So we are going to the next part which is frequency separation and for today's video I'm going to be using my retouch academy. In my last video I posted before this one, I showed you guys how to install your retouch academy i placed a link and how to also install your retouch academy into photoshop so if you've been having issues like myself um some weeks back go to my um my my channel and then check it up and then there's a link before it's been blocked or something go download it and then watch how you can install it properly okay back to the video I'm going to be using this retouch academy and show you how you can work with this guy to get the result you want. We'll click via Gaussian Blur, Frequency Separation, and then it automatically creates that action for us. Here we can work faster. So I would now be at the point where I can pick my, my first blow. So for me, I'll be looking at my skin. Before I pick my first blow, I'll be looking at the details that is on my skin before I choose what I would want for my first blow. So um, let's say I'm working with 3.9, for me it's too low because I'm seeing too many details. I'm still seeing too many details. And note that the higher your blow, the more detailed your image would be. Now know that every texture that is being taken away from your low frequency is being preserved on your high frequency. So you just don't want to leave too much detail on your low frequency because it's going to cause your image to be soft. Than it should be so i'm going to increase this all the way up because i want to I, I will need more of this texture on the high frequency than the low frequency and then let's use i want to use 10 i want to use 10 for this image i think yes 10 is perfect so today i'll be using 10 for this image and i will click ok and let's retouch i can do the work okay it's done so i will just click on my low frequency and then I will be showing you my brush setting so I'll go to my mixer brush click my mixer brush so for me today I'll be using my wet as 2 my load as 40 my mix as 40 my flow at 40 and then I'm going to be using this guy at 10 I would like to say the default setting for these two. I'll leave it at that. Now, um, for myself, most of the time I tend to increase this weight because I have a control over my brush. But for starters, you want to work with this so that it will help you control how much tones that are being moved from one place to the other. Okay, and then if you just install Photoshop, you get to see this um, box ticked. If you let this still tick, what happens is when I pick up my mixer brush and I want to brush, doesn't give you that skin tone. It gives you what is being selected. So if I'm I'm picking a different color, let's say red. So you see, it's not giving me. So I would want my brush to be transparent, which I would have to off this, and then let's do Ctrl Z to return back. Okay, so we are back. So let us off our high frequency. Why I love off my high frequency is so I can see my details. Many people don't get to know and understand what this helps you to do, but it works magic for you because if my high frequency is on and I'm brushing, now let, let me take an example. I'm brushing this part of the skin. Because of how sharp or how much blow I used as my first blow, I will not know what I'm actually doing as at that time because it might look all the same, like the same thing. But if you're offing your frequency separation, you get to see that this place is smoother than this place. This place is smoother than this place. So that is the easy way out to understand your frequency separation, even, the, even if you're using a very high blow. So for me, I would enjoy working this way because I can see where and where I have worked on and where and where I haven't. 
So, and then another thing is for me to on this of this high frequency, I'm going to be seeing the hair. And the advantage of me using a high blow is it preserves my hair, my hair texture, because more of the texture of the hair is being preserved on the high frequency. So whatever I'm doing on my low frequency is not going to be affecting much. All I'm just going to be doing is blending. So the reason why you want to choose a high blow every single time that would match with your skin is because you're trying to preserve your high texture as much as possible not to let your skin to be too soft for your client or for yourself or for anybody that will be appreciating your work later so let's get back to business so i'll be brushing right now so i'll carefully want to brush so i can as well go to my hair and then just want to get that blend of the hair and then know that as you brush, you want to go and check your before and after. Please, if you love this video, please do well to like, comment, and then don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notification so that each time we post, you get to see it. This, this particular video is a series. So if you have not watched the earlier videos, please do well to go check it out. It is detailed and will give you that relevance that you need to take your photography to the next level. And then lastly, I guess you have friends and people around you do well to share this video to that one that has been having issues with their frequency separation. So that they get to understand this little secret that we are sharing. Okay, so... You just don't want to be too hasty about your brushing, especially if you have been having issues with your mixer, mixer brush. You want to take your time and actually do this. Okay, now let's see what I just did. This is like magic. So let's see our before and our after. So you see, because of my choice of blow for this image, I've been able to preserve my texture here and it's looking natural. Okay, so I will want to brush. When I get to my highlight here, the secret is you want to stay on your highlight. You, will not, you don't want to spill. So when I get to in between my highlight and my shadows, I just want to blend in between. Open my brush, blend, blend in between to get that perfect blend. So for this tutorial, I'm actually using a mouse, but um, for the next video I'll be doing with my mixer brush, I should be using a pen tab for it, which um, I have been practicing with for some time. But for the sake of this video, I needed to show the mouse users and everyone, even if you're using a pen tab and you know the secret, it can also guide you on what to do and how to do it and for us that are using the pen tab there are certain you need to even do for your pen tab for it to work perfectly so if you have been having issues with your pen tab anticipate the new videos i will be doing after this series using my pen tab okay so i've been able to preserve that so let's off and on it So you've been able to cause a blend there. So if you notice, just because of my first blow alone, I'm having so much texture. Okay. So I'm having so much texture. So we'll continue brushing. So like I said, for my next video, I'll be using the um, graphics tab, tablet. So if you would want to see that, please, you can drop a comment below and um, we we'll get to work on it. You could as well for this image, I will um, drop the link to this image on the detail um, panel also on YouTube. So you can check it out. 
you can as well use nine points something even eight if you don't want your image to be this sharp and you'll still get a great result And for those of you that would want to work on this image, you can as well do more or work on the blemish remover. For the sake of the video, I didn't spend so much time doing the blemish remover because of time. I want I want this video to be as short as possible, though I know it's not be it won't, it won't be possible, but uh, we'll try. Okay, so please, if you love this video, please do well to like it. Don't just watch and benefit and then just pass. Help us grow this channel and help us reach more people out there. Do well to comment also. It helps to make the channel visible to others. And lastly, don't forget to share this video. I would greatly appreciate if I have more shares on these videos. Okay, so if you're new to the channel, subscribe because we have a lot in stock for you. So for, for my nose now, see the way I will brush my nose, my idea behind me brushing my nose and getting that detail I want is, I will stay with my shadows, this shadow guide, this shadow guiding line, I will stay with it, and then I would work with this highlight, I don't want to spill it, so I will remain there, and then I will want to also want to work with this highlight, then I will come down here and then I want to work over here, but... not spilling my shadows or my highlights. So I'll brush all of this and I'll come to the eye. I'll take my time. Now know that, <clears throat> like I said, this image, my previous video, the makeup I think was done by the client herself. So um, I'm not getting that very beautiful makeup look that I want. But the goal is for us to make it beautiful. So if maybe the makeups are not blending and all, our our aim is for us to do it or make it to blend using our mixer brush, our color grading and everything, every tool we have to our disposal to make this blend. So also this particular section, I would not want to keep it. The way I blended this area, I would want to blend that area. If you're having any issues, I I think I have two or three other videos on using your mixer brush to retouch. So just go watch it and then um, practice. The secret to mixer brush is practice. The more you do, the more you discover, the more you find ways. So what I do is, if I'm trying to blend the place, I will stay on that place and brush till it blends, till I see that it blends. That's the way I effect my change. So I know that I'm having light here, so in between, I would click on it and then hold it and then blend it. So I'm done.
this is like my before and my after so I would still go back and then I want to check what I'm missing out on I'll use bigger brush to just cause a blend on them. Get that smoothness. All right. So we are going to be working on the neck right now, and the shoulder aspect. So see the way I blend my tones. I'm not mixing my tones. I'm just letting. I'm just like a guide to where my tones are falling. So I'm having this light here, and I'm having this place now. I'm having this light here. I could just extend this chin, this neck bone, okay. So I will come here and then I'll brush. Okay, so next time we have washed away some of Okay, let's blend. I'm seeing some things here I need to blend. I just don't want that neck to look. Not to worry, if there are some details that we have lost, we'll get it back. Just trying to cause a blend here because this the makeup wasn't really blending, so that's to say to have to stress us as the photographers to be able to do that magic that would make it cause it to blend. So all right, we have come to the end of today's video. If you love this video, please do well to like, do well to comment, subscribe, and share. Till we see you again, keep creating.